when we had last left this cop, they had obtained a super cool psychedelic drug, Pyroholodon, from the Poncha broker, <laughs> the Poncha broker, and decided to take it just before speaking to a 12-year-old boy who was also high on some sort of drug. There did they gain his trust and uncover an amazing quest to defeat the most violent man in Ravishol, the child's own father. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Boom, 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 boom. I kind of um, was weirded out at first. You'll notice on the periphery, everything gets this like purple hue, which is often the color that you see whenever, you know, there's some sort of texture or lighting error. But I'm, a, I'm guessing that's not the case here. I think it, it's an artistic choice, because look, it fades away as I as I zoom out. Yeah, look at that. Very weird. But nonetheless, when I first saw it, I, I was a little worried. But I think it's probably nothing. Anyway, should we come over here and speak with Kuno S? I think maybe we should. Look at me, quick saving out of habit. Even though we have yet to even quick load in this game, right? We're just kind of like raw dogging it, so to speak. Let's see here. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Let's see. She hides behind the fence. Hey, kid. Child. Converse with me. You there, behind the fence. Walk away. Hmm. Let's say, hey, kid. What is this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. She puts her finger to her temple. Get the fuck out of here, face! You got something? Talk to me! All right. All right. Yeah, there's no getting through to her. Remember, we can't fuck with her. Otherwise, we're going to let Kuno down. All right. They probably, like we were alluding to, they probably are related and they just don't realize it or whatever, right? Because they do look so similar. I mean, it, it, there's a chance it, it's just coincidence, but probably something bad happening. So can we investigate this again? Because we were talking about this earlier a bit. Oh, look. Yeah, we have a very high sight check now. Oh, Plus 10 because Kuno told you about his shack. Plus 2 because Inland Empire said come back. Okay. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Oh, look, this is new stuff. The pile of Eternite looks stranger now that Kuno told you about his pad. Let's perceive. We could have still failed that. I wonder what would have happened. I guess we would have needed to come back. Medium success, perception sight. Because unless Kuno lied, you should just be able to pull the panels aside. Pull the panels aside. Oh, there it is. Something. Wow. There's not many animations in this game for, like, interactions and stuff, but the ones that are there, it really draws your attention to them, and the sound design is, like, off the charts, right? And, uh, I don't know, something about the animation, it just really works the way it draws you in so close. Probably something to do with it playing out in this art style. Perception sight. There it is. You see a shabby little door. So this is the shack Kuno mentioned. Let's take a look inside, then. This isn't, um, his dad's place, is it? I don't think so. This is like Kuno's drug den. Fuck. I hope. <laughs> I hope I'm not about to, like, have to rumble with his fucking dad just yet. Oh, yeah, this is the... Ooh, oh, shit, look. The pig. Okay. Well, let's go clockwise through here. Look, there's some sort of drug or something here. Alright, what is this? An empty tube of magnesolum, magnesium supplement. Heals your health, doesn't it? Oh, look, we can interact with this. Let's just inspect everything first. Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. Holy shit. The throne. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Electrochemistry. Be still my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere? I wasn't thinking about taking it. I swear, I was thinking about 
justice. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? <laughs> Can we get Kim to do drugs with us? Can we? <laughs> probably not. He's too stoic. We've, we're probably not that... <laughs> I don't know if we had high suggestion. That said, I think no matter what, probably Kim has higher suggestion than we do. Fuck it. I've heard amphetamines make you a really good detective. Are you a really good detective? No, I'm just a regular detective. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I wasn't thinking about taking it, I swear. I was thinking about justice. Of course, detective. Swift justice. Don't worry. We don't have to investigate every trace of narcotics. The lieutenant points to the ladder in the corner. Yeah, swift, lightning justice. Faster, harder, justicer. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Oh, okay. Man, so we can't even take it. How about this? The poster says, get out of the way or get fucked up. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah, look. There's someone who's probably in the way and they're getting kicked in a really wild way. It's like a roundhouse kick with some fun sneakers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're the ultras, aren't they? Wow, yeah. <laughs> Are they red because they're like, they're a commie or something? Kick them. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> all right. Oh, this is, there's money in this jar. Not drugs at all. Is this Kuno's money? I guess it's my money now. Oh, let's look up here. Ooh. Wow, we really did zone. Okay, so that's what that icon means when we were hovering over it. Yo. Oh, look at this. There's a cool outfit here. Can I grab it? Oh shit, I'm going all over, aren't I? Okay. Wow, is this how we get through the blockade? Because we didn't even really investigate the blockade yet. Oh shit, let's come down here. Real quick. What's this? This doorway is going to collapse soon. Oh shit. Hopefully not while we're here. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Postcard. Grand Quran 37. Weird. Let's take a look at it. Items? Huh. This postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi, an ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Huh. Do we think that maybe the, the whole drug problem here wasn't a coincidence? Maybe? Like, how, how sinister are we getting with this shit? Oh, look, there's some shit on the ground. Money? It is money. Free money. All right. Can I go into this? What even is this? Oh, this is the roof of the Whirling and Rags, isn't it? Oh, I bet that's where the, the mysterious blue door goes. I see. All right. So we've somehow navigated back here before even interacting with these people. I wonder if we'll get, like, unique interactions because of it. Ooh, nose of fed. Love it. Alright. Reality is twitching before us. Maybe we should zoom in. It is a little worrisome. Look, more money. Money, money, money. Love it. Even more money. There is free money everywhere. Money just grows on top of this roof. Okay. How do I get? <laughs> How do I get over to this thing? Can I? Oh, look, from here. Can I jump that? Ooh. A policeman cloak. Is that mine? Are there any other policemen around here besides myself and Kim? Who, Kim just recently arrived the other, or this morning, right? Looks like someone left this tarpaulin, uh, tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. You know, I used to always pronounce it tarpaulin, and that's definitely not how you say it, I don't think. Listen, there's some, like, weird noise in the distance. Rhythmically beginning. What is that? Huh. 
Esprit de corps challenging success. Man down! A trooper has been left behind the enemy lines. You could swear it's more of an instinct than an actual sight, but you know there's the RCM signature rectangle on the cloak. It's a cop's cloak. A cop's cloak! It's a cop's cloak! Just a cop's cloak. I don't want to deal with it right now. <laughs> no, let's say it. <laughs> it's a cop's cloak! Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Alright, but I got the dad bod going on now, big time. Super accelerated. Oh shit, Savoir Fire! Oh no! Oh, okay, we may have to come back to this check, because then we have something like nuking our Savoir Faire. Okay, let's look around first. Maybe we can get some bonus points. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. Holy shit, it looks cool as hell. Look at the colors. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks magnificent. Wow. I love this new trend in games for like industrial sectors to like have everything have like yellow caution areas and stuff, everything like trimmed in different colors and all that. Cause there are like, like if you've ever been around or even just seen like a cargo shipping container area, it's very colorful. It like, it totally stands out a whole bunch. I mean, I think sometimes games like dial it up a lot, but I appreciate it nonetheless, right? Um, I'm trying to think of other games that did it. I think Brink, way back in the day, if you've ever played Brink, it, it's not around anymore, but Brink had a lot of that going on. And Fallout 4, honestly. Fallout 4 had a lava with its industrial areas. I really enjoy the, like, um, what would you even call it? The retooling on some of the art style of Fallout 4, right? Making it look more, leaning more into the retro futurism, right? And letting more of the colors pop out. I don't know. I really like it. Some folks don't. I could see the argument for it. It doesn't look as dreary and depressing. But you still have dreary and depressing areas. I don't know. I appreciate it. Nonetheless, continue. The, the, the wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. Empathy, medium success. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. Motherfucker. I can't whistle in real life. Now that's a huge crane. <laughs> It's just a machine, Lieutenant. Like a giant hammer or a pair of pliers. Nothing to see here. Let him have this moment of wonder. No, let's let's lean into it for him, right? Motherfucker! Now that's a huge crane! Yes, that's one way of putting it. He turns to you with a faint smile. Oh, then looks back at the crane. See, he appreciated our childlike wonder <laughs> in our 40, 50, 60 year old body. It's certainly an impressive achievement of engineering. No, I'd be surprised if we were in our 60s. Gotta be 40s to 50s, right? But I digress. We're focusing on your cloak here. He looks at the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. What exactly are we doing up here? What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbor. They're bound to have information for us. I thought that was our intention. He looks around, wind rustling his hair. Or it could be that we're just exploring. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Empathy, medium success. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Do you really think this cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it. He looks over the ledge at the cold pavement below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meters, tr two meters tops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. Okay. Well, let's get our savoir faire up a bit. Right? Let's see. Yeah, we're, we've lost out on two savoir faire at the moment because of our... <laughs> what? 
We're going to take off our shoes to do a, a super jump. Okay. Our shoes and our pants. Hang on, Kim. I gotta get my jumping clothes ready. Yes, remove my pants, remove my shoes, let my wangus be free. Let us go. Let us go. <laughs> I better quick save in case this does kill me. <laughs> this is an actual situation where it may be important. I might die trying to jump <laughs> over here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Go for the jump, 42%, come on. Go for the cloak, jump over the ledge. Hooah! Oh shit, I'm fucked. Oh, I'm fucked. Oh, I'm fucked. Oh! <laughs> I didn't even fall on the other side! <laughs> you get scared at the last minute? Okay. That's why it's a savoir faire check and not like some sort of physical check, right? I Okay, I guess. Though savoir faire, yeah, savoir faire is like anything agility, isn't it? Yeah, because it was for grabbing the tie too. All right, savoir faire, medium failure. Holy wow, that's high. Doesn't seem dangerous. The lieutenant must be crazy to suggest that. This is certain death. Vertigo almost pushes you over the edge. Ooh, there goes my morale. Volition, medium failure. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Oh my god, my necktie is strangling me as well. This is really bad. <sighs> Horrific necktie. I got you, I got you, Breton. Let me just adjust your breathing a little bit. There, isn't that better? Tug on your tie. God, now I can't breathe at all. Stop doing this to me, necktie. You were supposed to be a friend. Hey, hey. What's happening? You okay? He sounds genuinely worried. I'm all right, Kim. I I just keep tugging at your necktie. I can't breathe. He shakes you gently by the shoulder. It's okay. You're just having a little panic attack. Try to breathe as slowly as you can, all right? The necktie lets go a little. It's vicious grip easing around your neck. Colors return to the world around you. Thanks. I think it's working. Let go of your tie. Good. We can always come back when you're feeling better. It's just a cloak, after all. He looks around. All right. Fuck me. I took off my pants and everything. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's put my pants back on. What are these pants? Why do I even need them? They just give me electrochemistry. I'm already horny enough as it is. Do I need to be wearing pants? <laughs> All right. Let's go on down here. Man, this does look very cool. I think the music is like fading in and out as we get closer to the next zone section. Is it safe to run here or is that like a danger time? Because I'm pretty low health here. It's got to be said. That said, we also did get more Nozafed. So, worst case, we have a way to recoup fully. Ooh. Oh, those are like distant, like, uh, tugboats and shit, right? Let's get out of here. But we have a way to recoup if we need to duke it out with Kuno's dad. The Kuno Patriarch. Okay. Let's see, is there anything else around here that I should investigate? Should I fuck with this thing? I'm afraid it'll kill me now. Like, I'm so low health, I'm afraid this will make me die. <laughs> Maybe I should take it easy. I'm I'm not doing great. Because <laughs> I don't know how many resources of healing I'll find in the world, honestly. Okay. Let's see. What other quests do we have here? Because we need to back off on some some of this shit. Split a kilo with Kuno. Let's see. Get speed from Kuno's apartment. Take down Kuno's dad. Optional. Buy the pants from Kuno. Who put the clothes in the trash? Hmm. Yeah, we still don't know that. Close water lock on Wednesday. Track down your gun. Track down your badge. Find out who is in the union box. We still do have some more, like, folks over by the... Oh, shit. 
by this area, yeah, by the clogged up uh, street that we can investigate with, right? We could do that. Do we have points again enough to mess with the check back up in our room? Maybe? Oh, the guy might be awake now. Oh shit, we can speak to that sleeping man. He might be awake. Let's check. Because it's like evening. If he's sleeping all day, maybe he'll be up once, uh, now that it's the evening. Holy shit, it's incredible in here! Wow! Oh my god, Lena, do you have anything to say? Yes. Oh, I'm talking to Kim. Sorry, Kim. I'm trying to talk to Lena here. Hello again, sweetie. Her gray eyes shine above the rims of her glasses. Sorry, I gotta go now. Alright, she gives you a small wave. Oh, I can't talk to most of these Oh, there's a bald man here who I can speak with. Yo, this man is still sleeping. I better quick save in case, like, I wake him up and then he just, like, knocks the shit out of me. Right? <laughs> it could happen. The worker is in a deep slumber. Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from. Into the primordial darkness. Ooh, shit. Astute. Okay. What about you, bald man? It's all about money, you know. Damn, if it ain't. Look at these folks. What are they doing here? Oh, look at this. Oh, this is where we would do our karaoke or whatever, right? Do you think Gart has anything new to say? Look, there's a bunch of new folk. Oh, look, a new unit. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts at a man's handwriting. I still have no idea how we can discern that. Let's see over here. Can I help you? Maybe it's just like a real life shortcoming, like I'm a fool. I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. <laughs> huh. Alright. Goodbye. Let's leave. We don't have anything new, really. And I'm worried about getting too far in his dialogue, right? Let's see over here. Can we talk to this man again? Hey, dude. Oh, look, we never asked him this. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Do you know what's behind that door? Point to the blue door. He looks up at you and then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. All right, I don't need anything else. Stay masculine. Yeah, maybe that's what, like I said earlier, maybe that's what I mean by the writing. That's more masculine or feminine appearing handwriting. But at the same time, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> All right. Can I push it? No, it's still nothing new with the door. Okay. Things have definitely changed in here, but I'm hesitant to do too much interaction. Right, it is getting fairly late. Let's see over here. Maybe the folks in the main harbor area that are blocking everything, maybe they've cleared out? I don't know. Let's see. Can we knock on this? Hey. Knock again. Still no answer. Leave. Let's not be annoying. Okay. Because we have really no reason to get in there at the moment. Alright. Anything else around here? We could go out this. There was nothing. Oh, whoops. I already went out. <laughs> We're just retracing our steps because, you know, things have definitely changed overnight. Okay, nothing else. And we don't waste any time by exploring. Gosh, I love the look of that at night. The neon on it. See a container you can't open? Equip a pry bar. Okay, up in here. Anything else? There's this bed. Right. This unit. I still can't interact with that. This this is like some big tease, right? Into As to what's in the other room over here. And what's this? I still can't... Oh, look. Oh. Interfacing Challenging 12. Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. Wow. Tool not in hand. Okay. Well, leave the mirror for now. And let's equip our shit then. I didn't even realize we could do that. So we, the reason why it's been running this whole time is because we broke it up. Okay. 
Holy shit, what an interaction. Okay. I wonder what might may happen. We better quick save in case it kills me. <laughs> Alright. Good. Do you think we might need a flashlight for this? Why not? Why the fuck not? Also, our room's kind of dark, so maybe there's a secret. Okay. Quick save just in case trying to fix this kills me. Alright. Wow. <laughs> Only 17%. Alright, here we go. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall in it, your face, adorned with the expression. Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. I bet we break it even more. Well, hang on. Do I have any interfacing debuffs right now? I have a buff to it. What's giving me the buff? My yellow gloves. <gasps> okay, let's try again. All right, I fucked it up. <laughs> the chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, and this is electrochemistry check, which we somehow failed. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. All right, we have a lot of interactions with this mirror, which I guess is fair if this is some sort of hub, our room. Uh, we should keep this equipped just in case. All right. Let's go on over here. Anything of interest in this area? Nothing. No, no, no. All right, fair enough. Let's get on out of here. There we are. And let's unequip this. Good. No more flashlight. Okay, let's go on down. Should we speak to Guard again? Especially now that we've spoken with Kuno and all that, right? Maybe. Maybe that could give us some degree of value. We may as well check. We'll do a quick look. Over here. And we saved earlier in case talking to Gart kills me. Can I help you? Let's see. Gart, I saw another thing at the Whirling. No, I did not. Another thing. Great. I love those. No, there's actually nothing else. Something else I want to ask about. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question! First, we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit! So about the money I owe? Yes, have you got it? How much do I owe you again? Actually, let's talk about something else. How much do I owe you again? A lot. A lot, lot. For the room, drinks, and broken window. 130 real. Actually, let's talk about something else. Alright, fair enough. See ya. Well, maybe we'll get that money. <laughs> Run, Kim! <laughs> Fucking cheese it! Let's get out of here. Police work is tough. Take, take, take breaks, talk to strangers, explore. I know, I love exploring. There's so much to explore. Let's see. Should I interact with the rest of this? No. I feel like that's killing time. When we may not have much. Do you think she has new dialogue? Oh, I wonder if the same people get new shit to say every day. Maybe? Hello again, officer. How are things? I have to run. That's how things are. Let's go up here and check by this racist lorry driver. Let's see. Do you think we could break into the frit? The frit? There we go. Isn't, um... Frit in... In French. He's like French fry, right? This guy looks like he will fuck me up. Look at this guy. He looks like he's going to kill me if I go up to him. Maybe we should avoid that for now. Ooh, listen to this cool ass music. Alright. Shit, all the cool music is over there. This is just where all the depressing music is. Ah, uh, the statue. Okay. Ooh, an auto save as well. Jeez. This is the restored statue? Let's take a peek. Horseback Monument. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Yeah, it looks kind of grotesque, doesn't it? Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, 
I am Philippe the Third, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Ravishol, son of Philippian kings, son of Philippe the Second, the Opulent, father of Philippe the Fourth, the Insane. What did this king do? Let's check my encyclopedia. Okay, I have plus one thanks to the hat, right? My Dick Mullen hat. All right, let's try to deduce it. 58%, come on, big money, deduce it! Oh fuck, I'm dumb as shit. Encyclopedia medium failure. What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. All right. You fucker. <laughs> Too bad we can't ask him about it, can we? Let's see. I don't think so. I don't think Kim is, like, contact-sensitive unless he speaks up. Yes? Yeah, okay. If Kim has something relevant to say, I think he'll just talk to us. What is this? An ox. A bold slogan! Human ox! Covers the truck. Sounds pretty not good. Something called human ox? I don't know about that. Oh, look. What's in here? Do I need to pry bar it? Oh! A white tank top. Plus one to physical instrument. Oh, shit. What was the uh, check for going into the door? Was that physical instrument? No, it was pain threshold. Okay. Fair enough. How do I look in it, though? Let's see. White tank top. Plus one physical instrument. Work it! Tank top, gym vest, reeking of sweat. This sleeveless shirt is the best choice if you're not afraid to show off your masculine upper body and that hairy chest. Do I have those things? Huh? <laughs> All right. Hmm, but maybe I want some conceptualization here? I'm not sure. I mean, this is a look. <laughs> but we're pretty low on conceptualization, so why not shore it up? Because we got plenty of, uh, suggestion to burn. Okay, cool. What's this? A whole bunch of stuff here. There's a person looking depressed. Oh, this is money. Okay. What's up? Was that your money? Oh my god, are they vaping or something? The small wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. She's a pail driver. Oh, like she drives through the pail. Is that what that means? Huh. Continue. Encyclopedia Medium Success. The photo. An, ambro an ambrotype from the turn of the century. As golden as her smile. Inland Empire Medium Success. It's the warmth of a winter's nights, of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your grandma? <laughs> Snap your fingers in front of her face. Excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask some questions. Nothing to do here. Grandma? <gasps> Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is gray like lead. Oh, is she tripping on some, uh, what's her eyes look like? Is she tripping on some pyroholodon? Half-light, medium success. No. This one, this one, is a monster in disguise. Holy shit, what? Excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask some questions? No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. This is very rude, but I guess let's do it. Snap your fingers in front of her face. Wait. Uh-oh. The lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Huh. Why? Why? I just told you why. Okay, if you say so. Weird. Huh. What does Kim know about this that I don't? Probably a lot of things. <laughs> All right. Hey, Wild Pines. Didn't we read something about... Oh, yeah, that's the... Um, 
one of the companies or something? We saw someone with a Wild Pines like worker overalls on or something like that, right? Let's see. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Okay. Anything else around here? I wonder if at a certain point in the game all of this will clear out. That would be so cool. Should we go up this direction? Toward the commotion? Look, there's money. Hmm. A foreign car. Kept in good condition. Free money. There we go. What's a scab mean? Aren't scabs like... Oh, fuck. They're folks who, like, break from a union or something, right? It's union-related. I'm sure we'll find out. See, this is the benefit to our character being really stupid. Is that me being really stupid in real life works out. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Over here. We saw some folks over here like, yeah, these people. Let's have a chat with them. They're pretty close by. Here we go. Hey, what's up, you two? Have you no Ooh. shame whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape? Yo, this guy's really loud. The man says to his partner, Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, <laughs> let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? The other one is eating a big sandwich. Do you think they know the salami guy? <laughs> Maybe I can get a bite out of his sandwich, too. Like, how big is it? Can he finish it? Maybe I want some. Huh. What's the game? What are they looking at here with these, like... It looks like a big, like, pit of fushigi. <laughs> Alright. I love that. You're a man with a fork in a world of soup. I am trying oh. to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now, stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. He's grabbing his own ass? Physical instrument, easy success. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Shouldn't I ask what game it is first? All right, I got this. It's ball time, baby. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. Uh-oh, hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Plus two, acting without hesitation. Better observe than first. Fuck it, here I go. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. I failed miserably. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Is this going to kill me? Oh god. Check failure. Did I suffer anything? I may have suffered a hit to my morale. Good god, I'm like borderline dead. Alright. Hand-eye coordination. Medium failure. This felt wrong. Something like touching your sister's breast. Oh my god. You threw your sister's breast. <laughs> Gaston Martin. Mon Dieu! The jolly man exclaims. Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. <laughs> Physical instrument, easy success. There are no two more harmful words an athlete can hear than good job. And this was downright embarrassing. Hold on, why did it feel so wrong? The throw was terrible, and you know it. No need to mock me. I thought something way more spectacular would happen. <laughs> Let's say that. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much perfect pentak, or uh, pentanke throw, or pentank throw. His tone is full of admiration. Half light, medium success. With a pinch of fear. Oh, because I'm a cop, he's kissing my ass. Oh, shit. Rene Arnaud. How are you ever going to get the officer's shit off your nose, Gaston? 
or even climb out of his ass. He shakes his head in extreme disdain. Perfect throw? Well, I still feel defeated. That's just how Johnny Ball Game is. Extraordinary. I was going for something cool, but I screwed it up, like always. Oh. <laughs> nah, that's too sad. I still feel defeated. Let's go with that. That's sad enough. Probably because those rooster pants are squeezing you senseless. Whatever happened to practical, durable, Ravashol made? He shakes his head. Now what can I do for you? Yes, officer. The lieutenant gives you a quick side glance. What do we need from these gentlemen? I wanted to play with their balls. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the back of Whirling and Rags? You seem to be playing in a crater. I saw the statue of Philippe III near the roundabout. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Let's just exhaust all of these. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the Whirling and Rags? Unfortunately, I don't, he shrugs. Unlike most of... It's such a stereotypical, like, really rough fucking French accent that they have, right? I don't think any French people these days talk like this. Or maybe ever? I don't know. <laughs> but regardless, that is how they sound. <laughs> he shrugs. Unlike most of the, of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law. So you can, so can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. So again, you don't know anything? Interesting take from this guy. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. Inland Empire medium success. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present. And almost no future. Oh my god, Inland Empire. Jesus Christ. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes, the man nods. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Was it made by a sea monster rising from the depths? Was there an earthquake here? Do you know what created it? Was there an earthquake? No, he replies, gaze wandering over the bay. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communards hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Wait, who are the communards again? I think it's me. I might be one of them. Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists. Call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. The carabineer frowns. Saintly sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly, too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a boule, a boule in his fist. Oh, a ball, a ball. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad Anarchist women, strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though. We lacked 
Excalibur. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. Why shell them here in Martinez? Yeah, this is like... Was this always the poor harbor district area where, like, poor folks live? Huh. I guess, yeah, of course, yeah, a lot of poor folks would be part of, like, a civilian citizen's revolution, right? You would, you would assume. Maybe not the case here, but I would assume so. Why shell them here in Martinez? They should have chosen a place away from, pe from people and buildings. No, I think that's the point, right? Look around. I understand. I'd bomb this place, too. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Is that how we get points in fascism? <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Both of these, I think, will get us to the same direction. Why shell them here in Martinez? Or no, let's say this. They should have chosen a place away from people and buildings. This place is a damn beachhead, son, he says, pointing to the bay. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes, he nods, inspecting you with some disdain. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Ravashol. Suggestion medium success. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Oh, cool. <laughs> Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Ravishaw during Operation Death Blow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Marie and the Delta. He points to the northeast. Death Blow sounds grim. Nodfully. So, nod thoughtfully. I said nodfully, didn't I? I said fucking nodfully. Fuck me. <laughs> nod thoughtfully and turn to look northeast. Shake your head and look down at the crater. Death blow sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabid dogs out. Most likely, he says, looking down at the soil. We are playing pentank, pe petank, on their mangled corpses. Jesus Christ. Gaston Martin finally talking. Blood ground. He, he also has a very strong, like, stereotypical old-ass French accent. The other one shakes his head. You got old René going there like he isn't angry enough already. Hold on, the Coalition? Is that why everything is so bombed out? Ah, that explains all the war damage. Look, we're, we are getting info on, like, like the world. Hold on, the Coalition? Mm-hmm, he grunts. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs. But the enemy of my enemy and all that, they're the lesser evil. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Ah, that explains the war. Actually, I already know all this. I just wanted to know if you do too. <laughs> hmm. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Let's keep trying to get more info. Even if it is from this shithead. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked too. There is a strange gleam in his eyes. Half-Light medium success. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up. But Martinez, they keep, is a monument. A dark shadow runs across his face. And now, the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault, the jolly man remarks. You, we, the coalition, Ravishol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still hold influence. Huh. Hold up. 
You, we, the Coalition, Ravishal, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Oh, weird. What happened to their leadership then? Huh. Maybe the leadership got killed and they just assumed that after the death of whoever was leading the revolution, that that implied surrender? Huh. Anyway, Renee says, You don't even begin to understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... He stops mid-sentence and turns to you. What do you think? That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. This coalition seems quite capable, actually. Commies just don't understand how money works. Nothing. I don't think. I just do. <laughs> Huh. Let's see. Foreign... I'm not sure. This coalition seems quite capable, actually. I don't know. Fuck them. For our first playthrough, like I said, we're playing by heart. Rather than going with a specific, like, archetype. And, and like, playing around and having fun with that. Commies just don't understand how money works. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess, and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for hard working class to take over. Maybe we go with that. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, let's go with this. Let's see what happens. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Preposterous! Surely you don't mean it. He frowns. I am just sorry it had to be then. After eight years of fighting those kami hyenas, boiling cats for food, and drinking my peace in the mountains, I would have preferred it if the right honorable king, Giam, returned to Ravishol, or even if that if that damn clown, Frisell, had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Empathy, medium success. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in this world was wiped away. And now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the rule of the suzerain with. Who, I who was this Frisell? You mentioned Guillaume? Hmm, what exactly is a suzerain? Let's just exhaust this. Who was this Frisell? Damn Frisell. He was the king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers... The Carabine Carabineers failed him and the crown. The old veteran falls silent and massages his chest. He died in the hands of the Hoi Poloi in a very public execution. You mentioned Guillaume. A true king in both blood and mind led Ravishol before Frisell. It would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Oh, so this person is still alive. Huh. Interesting. Hmm, what exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? He then slowly nods and says to himself, They've forgotten already. Empathy medium success. Soon they will forget everything. Him too. Then, he, cho he chooses anger over melancholy. Who oh, fuck. 
real shit. Rene Arnaud. It's no use talking to you. You are still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Oh my god. Composure legendary 14. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? I saw the statue of Philippe III near the roundabout. Let's say that. Ah, yes. King Phil- Ah, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I can't- I, I'm a broken person. Ah, yes. King Philippe III. On his steed. A reminder of what Ravishol once was. Oh, absolutely. Gaston Martin. He smiles as if reliving a pleasant memory. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Electrochemistry medium success. Cocaine? Cocainum? Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower. Fear that... So, this is Rene again. A superpower feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a king rule? What was that about cocaine? Let's talk about something else. How should a true king rule? Decisively. Without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. Powerful leaders, not afraid to do what must be done. That's what this country needs. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. Says... Er, <laughs> there is some wariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. What was that about cocaine? Oh, old Philippe was a big fan of the purple nose candies the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. He chuckles. His egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine for clarity of vision to aid in their work. <laughs> no, that got German. In their, in their work. <laughs> Regnum cocainum. Ravashol's finest years. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. Electrochemistry. Medium success. I'm satisfied with this explanation. <laughs> of course. The lieutenant marks dryly. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Felipe III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor, and it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. Oh shit, what? Inland Empire, medium success. Higher realms? Of course. It all makes sense. 
Huh. Maybe we should get some cocaine, too. Pyre Holodon helps me connect to Higher Realms. What was that about Higher Realms? Sounds interesting. Such responsibility requires a boost every now and then. I sometimes need one, too. Seems like irresponsible behavior for a monarch. Drug users shouldn't even operate heavy machinery, much less rule countries. Thanks for clearing that up. I have some other questions now. Let's mention Pyra Holodon, because we wouldn't have had this... Uh, we wouldn't have had this available unless we had went down to the pawn shop first, right? Pyra Holodon helps me connect to Higher Realms. Please, officer, don't encourage him. He quickly turns to Renee. Do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. The RCM isn't interested in them. Yes, indeed. We are not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. All right, let's talk about something else. Right. The old man stands tall and proud, looking at you inquisitively. Should we try and do this composure check? We have things that grant us composure, don't we? Let's see. Thank you for your time. Let's check real quick. Yeah, we have plus one composure. We may as well fail it. Let's see. What's this? Ooh, physical instrument. Son, maybe that's how physical instrument sounds, especially beginning with calling us son. Son, you've really let yourself go. It's a disgrace. But coach, physical instrument is going to get you back in prime condition, even if it, even if it takes a million push-ups. Coach, physical instrument? Does that mean you'll call me a maggot and a Nancy boy to motivate me? Yes, sir. Forge me into organic steel, coach. I'm <laughs> I'm really, really not interested. Discard thought. Coach physical instrument? Does that mean you'll call me a maggot and a Nancy boy to motivate me? Does a master swordsman insult his own blade? No. I'm going to turn you into an athletic benchmark, you big pussy. Uh, yes, forge me into organic steel, coach. Hmm, I don't really want to. I think I want to be a fucking disaster. Hmm, I'm not sure. I guess we could forget it if we want to, right? Let's see. Let's let's just toy with it here. Yes, forge me into organic steel, coach. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss, and tears. But when I'm done with you, boy, you will be a master athlete. Wait, why piss? <laughs> when a man sets his mind and body on something and gives his 110%, he is sometimes going to piss himself. It just happens. No shame in that. <laughs> Let's do this, coach. I'm with you. Too much abuse for my taste. I'm more of an intellectual. Opt out. Let's see what it is. Opt in. Coach physical instrument. Thought gained. Behold, world, here walks a sportsman, hands chalked and hair kept back with a bandana. The Homo Athleticus. My god, what does it do? Oh, look, we're really progressing through Mazovian socioeconomics. Hmm. Okay. And see, we don't yet have... Yeah, we don't have minus two encyclopedia yet because of that. Okay. So we only get the detriments here if we decide to internalize it. We've just got it available for the tanking if we so desire. Let's see, what is this? Coach, physical instrument. So you were minding your own business, trying to get some detective work done, when suddenly a voice emerged within you and told you you're a wuss, a namby-pamby, a sissy, and a limp jellyfish. This voice has zero gender, gender sensitivity and even less empathy for underwhelming athletic performance. Try to purposefully piss it off, and it teaches you something. Pretend you don't know the difference between a double and a single support phase in the discipline of hammer throw. It hates that. Yeah, we probably won't fuck with that, but we've got it there. All right. Let's see, anything else here? Yeah, let's fail this check real quick. I like playing in the dark. Sharpens your nocturnal instincts. Feels like being on a recon again. 
Oh. Oh, yeah, because it's dark out now. Well, hang on. Let's not do it just yet in case it kills me. Thank you for your time. There we go. Quick save enabled, and let's fail this like composure check. Dark. Sharpens your nocturnal instincts. Feels like being on a recon again. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? Failed it, of course. Could you imagine if we won that? Holy shit, we'd never win another roll again in the game. Because <laughs> that's how luck works. You know, it's a gauge. <laughs> Composure, legendary failure. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past in his old uniform. This is not uncommon. He catches your glance and nods. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers, in service of Frisel the First, Guillaume le Lion, and the Valiant King Philippe the Fifth before him. Don't you mean Frisel the Fun? You do not speak his name, Craven. Although he was a clown, <laughs> he adds. He turns back to you. But he was our clown. Ours to ridicule and to mourn. There is something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Huh. Alright, thanks for your time. Wow, holy shit. A lot came from trying to play with these old men's balls. But no ball play is what happened. And instead, Coach Physical Instrument got very angry. <laughs> all right, and we almost nearly died as well. And we all, we saw the cool cloak and all of that shit up there. What if we go back the next day and it's not there? Jeez, it's getting close to midnight. At what point do we have to like turn in or whatever? We don't even I don't even have anywhere to turn in at. How long do I have on my long way home? Let's see here. Let's take a quick peek. Oh god, where is it even at? Here, thoughts. Lonesome long way home. Three hours remaining. Will we get it before midnight? 3.15. We will get it before midnight. Okay. At what time do we need to turn in, though? I don't know. Hmm. Alright, nonetheless, when next we come back, I suppose we're gonna burn through some more time looking at some more folks. Talking to some folks. Digging through some shit. Hopefully we don't fall over dead. <laughs> right? Holy shit. And hopefully, we figure out where we're, where we're trying to go. All right. Until next time, please take care of each other.